Welcome, my name is Colleen Tauke and I'm a sewing specialist here at Fonson Porter. In this So Easy tutorial, I'm going to show you how to miter corners on your quilt. Now you can see as the quilt behind me has stripes and the corners are mitered, so you see the corner or the stripes coming into the corner. The sample here on the sewing center is a really great example of a printed fabric that has a dark and a light side as the flowers kind of flow through the design and the design or the quilter decided to miter the corners here so that you would get that continuous light on the outside edge and it would continue around the corner so you get that great frame to the quilt. So how do we do that? How do we miter borders on a quilt? What you're going to be starting with and we're going to pretend this is your quilt center pretend this is your fabulous um, patchwork, you're going to cut borders that are longer than your quilt top. A lot of times we're, when we're cutting borders, we're cutting them to fit to one length to another length. But on this, in this case, you're going to oversize your border pieces. And you're going to see that I'm going to look at that are overlapping in the corner. Even if your quilt is 102 by 96, you're going to cut and create borders that are longer so that they overlap like this on the outside edge. Then when it comes to putting them on, this is what you're going to do. You're going to take your quilt top. You're going to fold it in half and find the center. And I'm just going to mark it with a little crease here. And you're going to do the same thing with your border lengths. You're going to fold them in half or measure them, but if they're extremely long, you want just to measure, but you're going to find the center. And you're going to put the centers together and match them up. And put a pin there. Now, to be honest with you, when I put borders on, I tend not to pin them very often, but if you're putting on borders that you're going to be mitering the corners, you want to center this. So you're going to want to work your way along and pin this in place so that it doesn't shift because you have to have that extra length on both ends. And then I'm going to flip this over. Actually, I probably should have been pinning from this side because there's one thing that I do want to make sure that you do and that is a little bit of a marking, a start and stop point on your border. What you're going to do and if you've sewn a lot, you know about where a quarter inch is. So a quarter inch in, a quarter inch here. This will be one start and stop, or start or stop, and here. So a quarter inch in from each side. And you're going to sew then from point to point along the side of the quilt. Now I have one of those already put on. And you can see here that I started a quarter inch in, stitched along the border, and stopped one quarter inch from the edge of the quilt top. Now, that will create the first side. You are going to take a second border strip and you're going to take the next side. And it doesn't matter which side you start on or which one you do next. You can do opposite sides, adjacent sides. It won't matter at this point. You're again going to find that middle spot you're going to find the middle of the next border. Now remember, if your quilt is a rectangle and not a square, you're going to have two sides that are going to be longer than the other. So make sure you pick up the right border. And why do I know this? It's probably because I've picked up the wrong one before. <laughs> make sure that it's the right one to go on. Match your centers. Again, pin to make sure that they don't shift. Since this one is fairly short, I'm just going to put three pins in to hold it in place. I've already got a starting point because I know that's where I ended last time. So my starting point is going to be here. I've got a dot marked here so that I remember to stop short of the corner and I'm going to stitch that. Now, when you go to stitch, make sure that your other borders are out of the way and don't get caught in your sewing. You'll want to take the hand wheel and turn to drop the needle right in that starting point. Let me put my needle in the right position. Drop the needle down. There we go. Making sure that the borders are not caught. Then I want to just sew my quarter inch seam all along.
And if your quilt top's bigger, there's going to be a lot of fabric going through, so just kind of keep manipulating things, keep things nice and flat. Remember to stop short of that corner, right at the dot. Just going to take a little quick stitch there, break threads, and take it out. And you can see, if I flip the borders out, now I've got two sides attached. And yes, you're going to have a lot of fabric here. You're going to do the same thing on all um, the last two um, edges. And you're going to want to press this. But at this point, what I want you to do is you need a marking tool and a ruler. Whoops, I'm going to lay that over to the side. I'm going to press my seam allowances um, toward the border. So I'm going to take it over to the ironing surface and I'm going to finger press them quick. Makes it, make sure that I get all the way opened up. Don't want to leave a little false ditch in the way there. Again, pressing your seam allowances toward your border. Just touch that with the iron so it's nice and flat. Now, we have to deal with this corner, so let's get into it. What we're going to do is we're going to fold the entire quilt top at a diagonal, and we're going to match these seams up, one over the top of the other. The first time you do it, you think, hmm, that's interesting. Now, I know I pressed seam allowances toward the outer edge, but temporarily I'm going to fold them back just so that I can get my border piece to lay nice. And you see that my border strips now are right over the top of each other. If they're um, precisely cut, they should lay parallel right on top of each other. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to make sure that everything else is laying flat. And I am going to use the diagonal of my quilt top to continue that line out off of my border. And you can double check yourself. If I turn my ruler around here, it should also match up with the 45 degree line on your ruler. We have a lot of angles marked on a ruler we don't always use, but this is where it comes in handy. If you manipulate this around, so your 45 degree line is laying on the outside edge of your border strip. This edge of your ruler should go right along the fold of the quilt top itself. This is where I started and stopped. I want to draw a line from there all the way out to the outer edge of my quilt border. Now you can see that line. I'm going to put a couple of pins in that because I don't want it to shift, especially if it's a print or a stripe that I want to have come into that make that kind of picture um, frame kind of corner. And I can stitch either direction in or out. But I'm going to stitch in so I can see exactly where to stop. Now you also want to make sure all those seam allowances are kind of out of your way. It may take a pin to help you kind of hold those back and away. Then we're going to take it to the machine, put the needle in the center position so we can stitch right on the marked line. And with any luck, as you come into that point where you've put your borders on, if you have to stop a half a stitch short of it, do it. Don't over stitch it. At this point, I'm right ne next to it. So I'm going to take a little secure stitch, take it out of the machine, and I've stitched down that diagonal. Take my pins out now. This is where the unveiling comes. Will it work? We open up, and we have that beautiful miter. What we're going to be doing from the back side is we're going to open up these fabrics that are the border. We're going to press everything. And remember how we press those seam allowances outward? Here they'll lay down perfectly. So let's take it over and give it a nice little press and look at our finished mitered corner. A great way to finish off those quilts that have that either a stripe that you're using to the, the um, make that picture, or even if it's just a, a solid fabric that you'd like to go around to have that pretty miter here. Extra fabric, all you need to do is, you can use a rotary cutter, but you can just go in with a scissor and leave approximately a quarter inch seam allowance behind so that your border is ready for you to move on to corner two, three, and four. 
So mitered corners, great way to take those borders just one little step further. Thanks for joining me. If you'd like to see more of our So Easy tutorials, please visit our website. Thanks for joining me.